Hi, this is Jack Stanley, and I wanted to talk to you about political parties. You know, so often uh, we talk about the parties of the United States. We have a presidential election every four years. We have, you know, uh, Congress, our representatives every two years, Senate every six years, and they're representing a party. Now, I wanted to talk about this because I wanted to share some information that I think is important and pertinent about the whole idea of party. This country was founded, first off, let's, let's go through the founding of this country a little bit here. The United States was founded with the idea of no political party at all. That was not in the framers' intention. I'll go all the way back to the beginnings of this country, if we can put it this way, with the Declaration of Independence. Um, basically, was stating that we wanted to be a free country. They didn't get into any kind of political ideology of how the country would be run. Shortly after this, we had what was called the Articles of Confederation. Now, this was a document put together that was put together in such a way to totally go against English rule. Now you have to understand something, that English rule had dominated, of course, the colonies. And so the Articles of Confederation was a complete and total opposite and total reaction to British rule. You know the old saying, from every action is an equal and opposite reaction. And it was such a reaction, it was far beyond the realms of sensibility. However, this country was run under the Articles of Confederation. We had several presidents of Congress who were considered the presidents of the United States uh, under the Articles of Confederation. They served for one year. But there were lots of limitations and lots of problems. And of course, the presidents were nominated by their peers. That's how they looked upon it. And even with the formation of the United States under the present Constitution, which of course was written and voted upon in 1787, went into effect in 1789, uh, the thing is that even at this point, there wasn't a great feeling for political parties, nor were people talking about it. Although we did have those that were more conservative, and we had those that were more liberal. Very much, if you think about it, in the English system, you know, if you look at uh, the English uh, monarchy, and, and of course, if you look at Parliament, you have the the Tories and the Whigs, and each represents a very different ideology. With the United States, our first president was George Washington, nominated by acclamation. I mean, it was unanimous. There was no real party, although eventually the term would be Federalist, and uh, George Washington took office. Now, he was nominated, uh, excuse me, he was inaugurated in New York City on April 30th, 1789. And of course, Congress got together in 1789 and occupied uh, what was called um, Federal Hall, which was in New York City, right on Wall Street, on the corner of Wall and Broad. Now, it was a large building and Congress, the uh, House of Representatives, met on the lower floor, and the Senate met on the upper floor. Hence the terms, you know, the lower and upper house chamber. Um, one thing that's kind of interesting is still there was no parties. And parties didn't really start until the formation of George Washington's cabinet. Now, George Washington's cabinet was an amazing collection of individuals. Great intellects, great ideologies, 
and fantastically strong egos. Yet Henry Knox, Secretary of War, these are the biggies. The Secretary of the Treasury, Treasury Alexander Hamilton. You had, as Secretary of State, Thomas Jefferson, and as Vice President, John Adams. Those are the real powerhouses that were involved in that administration. Although, in this administration, whenever there was a cabinet meeting, of course, John Adams was recused from the grouping because they needed to. They needed to be uh, separate. That's the way they looked at it at the time. Now, Alexander Hamilton and Thomas Jefferson were of two very different camps. You had at the same time troubles going on in France. And of course, the two different camps had two different sides. But within George Washington's cabinet was founded our political parties. The Federalist Party would be the party of Hamilton and what would be called the Republican Party would be under Jefferson. Now, of course, you hear the term Republican. Republican back then did not mean what Republican means today. Okay, the Republican Party uh, under Jefferson was a very liberal leaning, more for the farmer state, as it were. The Federalist was much more conservative, much more strong central government, um, and much more for the northern interests, the banks, the moneyed uh, sectors. And so immediately within George Washington's cabinet was the clashing of egos, minds, ideologies, and personalities. And through this was formed these political parties. It's interesting to note in the Constitution, they really didn't give a great deal of thought about political parties. I don't think they were thinking of the insanity that would go along with political parties. Because think about this. You know, you have the Federalists and the Republicans. And everything's fine with George Washington's administration. His first, his re-election, which was also unanimous. And, of course, John Adams would be vice president. The battles within Washington's administration in his second term would totally destroy um, his cabinet. Jefferson would leave. Adams found himself more and more alienated because he was stuck between his devotion to Washington, his devotion to the administration, and his friendship with Thomas Jefferson. By the year of 18 excuse me, for the year of 18, uh, 1796, when the first real election took place in the United States. And in that election was the first time you had political parties. And it was as ugly as one would imagine. And the way our Constitution worked at the time, whoever who would win the most amount of votes would be president. Whoever would win the second largest amount of votes would become vice president. Now, with the framers of the Constitution, since they weren't thinking political parties, they were thinking of unity. They were thinking that the individuals would work together. Unfortunately, this would not be the case. Because in the election of 1796, John Adams won the presidency. The runner-up, by just a few votes, was Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson's ideology, his political nature, and his clandestine activity at destroying all those who disagreed with him 
made things very problematic because you had John Adams on this side, you had Jefferson on this side, and they couldn't see the same way. And it was a very destructive atmosphere because you had two people that were the closest of friends and they were torn asunder by politics. So one has to remember that today when we think about political parties it all started in the administration of George Washington and as time went on politics became far more important than substance quite often. And of course we went through various different parties. I mean the Federalists eventually morphed into what we call the Whigs. And the Whigs, and you had a whole bunch of subgroups that know nothing, so this and that, uh, would eventually morph into what was called the Republican Party, which still exists. The Republican Party eventually called themselves the Democratic Republicans, and then they just dropped Republican altogether and became the Democratic Party. And uh, it has remained pretty much the same. We've become a two-party system. There's no reason for that. There's nothing in the Constitution about that at all. We should have a five-party system. I think that would be better. Because now what has happened is that the parties have hijacked the, the system. And if you're not a Republican or you're not a Democrat, you have a snowball's chance in hell of getting anywhere. And that's wrong. I'm very much an advocate that you should have a whole list of people. And you shouldn't have these situations where by the time of the convention you know who has won. Let's wait to the convention to figure it out. That's why you had conventions. And I think it's very, very important to change this whole primary thing around. I think that's a mistake. We should have shorter amounts of time involved in, in our political contest. It should be like six weeks. That's plenty of time. And maybe I'll be a little nicer, maybe three months at most. Let them run, let them speak, but nobody makes a decision until the convention. And maybe it's time to get rid of the Republicans and the Democrats and start looking at various other ways, other parties. Because you can see that we have, since we have these two camps, we have these two polarized Jeffersons and Hamiltons. This argument has been going on since George Washington's administration. We need to expand the field. We need to find the interests. And who cares uh, how many different candidates there are? There should be. They should all have a voice. And I think that's an important thing that we should look at. Because unfortunately, as I said, the Republican Party and the Democratic Party has, have hijacked the system. That's not the way this country was founded. In fact, when it was founded, we just had the Electoral College. You didn't use the popular vote at all. The popular vote is secondary. You have to understand that. I don't think people truly understand this whole thing. And it's made to have control to give power to the states. If you got rid of the Electoral College, this would become one state. And then you'd have total and complete control of everything. And we would lose a lot of our power. So you don't want that. That is a safeguard put in by the founders of this country. So you never want to get rid of the Electoral College. It's very, very important. But I do believe that we need more political parties. And they need to be on an equal playing field. We need to find a way to have an open dialogue of candidates. And someday, hopefully, someday soon, this will become the fact. Because right now, we are seeing a process hijacked by two ideologies, Jefferson's and Hamilton's. So thank you.